Hi, Peter again, and we continue our journey in exploring NLP. We've been talking about what NLP is, and another way to look at NLP is you could say that NLP starts with the question, what do I want? So in other words, we've looked at the fact that NLP comes about through modelling other people, but then if you take it a step back, why would you do that? The first question you've got to ask yourself is, what do I want in life? And then you would go out and find the people that have got those qualities that you want and model them. So when we talk about what we want in our life, we're talking in the area of goals and outcomes. And goals and outcomes are a big part of NLP. And we're going to be talking about well-formed outcomes later in this series. But first of all, there's a uh, distinction that I want to make which uh, is important at this stage, and that is the distinction between a state and an outcome. Because when you ask someone, oh, what would you like? People will often refer, well, I just want to be happy, or I want to be peaceful, or I want to be motivated and passionate. But from an NLP perspective, that is a state and it's not an outcome. An outcome or a goal is something tangible, like a certain amount of money or a certain physical state of health or a certain number of friends or a certain state of business. These are all have evidence based to them. There's something you can work towards. Whereas a state is an emotional thing that fluctuates from minute to minute. And in NLP, we learn to create the states we want in the moment that we want. And so from that perspective, we can have any of those states, happiness, peace, or whatever, right now. And I'm going to teach you that in a moment. And so if that's the case, we can have it now, then it's not really an outcome. You know, it's different to an outcome. So let's talk about state management or elicitation of a state, if we want to use the technical jargon. What I want to show you is that right now, you can change the very emotional state that you're feeling. So let's choose a state. Say, for example, smiling to yourself. You know, happiness, just sort of giggling to yourself. So whatever state you're in as you're listening to this and listening to my voice, what I'd like you to do is think back to a time when you last remember having a good old giggle at life, smiling to yourself. Maybe it was something cute one of your kids did or one of your friends did or something where you looked at life and saw it from the funny side and you just couldn't help smiling to yourself. And notice as you do that, going back into that thought, thinking of the things that you thought at that time, seeing the things that you saw and feeling those feelings, that you can actually start to feel those same feelings of sort of giggling inside. Go on, just let it come up. And in fact, you can even close your eyes and imagine turning that feeling up so that maybe tingling feeling in your body or it might be a colourful yellow feeling or something like that is expanding through your body and you can feel that state coming to you. So this is how we call elicitation of a state and it proves to you that you can have any state you want at any time that you desire. So this is state management and we do a lot of that in NLP. Now, one of the important states, the most important state that I, as an NLP trainer, will be trying to teach uh, my students in the NLP trainings is the state of empowerment. Okay? So it's a feeling of, yes, I can do whatever it is that I set my mind to do or set out to do. And so I'd like to talk about that state of empowerment and where it comes from because this will be central in our NLP trainings going forward and it's central in any form of our personal development going forward because if you're empowered to do what you think you can do, of course there'll be nothing holding you back. So let's talk about that for a moment. So empowerment starts obviously when we're young. We're born completely powerless, but we don't know that at the time. But over time, we gain beliefs, originally from our parents. Our parents might say, well done, Johnny, you can do it, you're doing so well, and we begin to think of ourselves as empowered. But again and again, our parents could also say negative things like, you're such a bad boy, you really don't deserve this, and we can get disempowering beliefs as well. And over time, these beliefs build up and reinforce themselves. 
Now there's a saying that the prover proves what the thinker thinks. Some of you might have heard of that before. And what it means is this, that if you think a certain thought like, um, I'm always clumsy or I don't deserve love, then what will happen over time is that when you get in situations where, say, you are clumsy or people do ignore you, then what you'll do is you'll begin to think to yourself, ah, yes, I'm right. And you know, in other words, the prover will prove what you originally thought. And you'll sort of forget the times, all the times when you weren't clumsy or you weren't loved, and you'll just focus on those times that you are. And that'll actually reinforce these disempowering beliefs. So this is really, in the end, what causes uh, empowerment. And there's a couple of other points to think about empowerment and how to change empowerment. The first is our focus. If instead of focusing on the disempowering, uh, the disempowering events in our life, we focus on those where we've succeeded, we'll tend to have a greater sense of empowerment within ourselves. Then the other, other very underrated quality that everyone has inside of them is their curiosity. Now, those people who are extremely curious to find out more and find out better ways to improve themselves are at a great disadvantage to strike those veins of gold or those great teachers or those excellent books, which will help them turn their mindset around. Because at the end of the day, we're all human, so we're all as empowered as each other. We're all capable of doing great things or no things. But those people that are disempowered, that already have this idea that I can't do anything, I'm no good, then they're not even going to give them a chance, give themselves a chance to succeed in life. But those people who when they look in the mirror, they see themselves as a powerful being, know that they have every chance as much as anybody else to succeed in life. And they're the ones that are going to go out and prove to themselves that they are empowered. So we'll talk about this in a moment, but we love the, the presupposition, perception is your projection. So this all boils down to something we call the cause and effect. In other words, there's some people who live on the cause side of the equation and some people who live on the effect side of the equation. So let's talk about this. Do you know somebody, or indeed are you a person that lives on the effect side of the equation and thinks that you are at the effect of everything that happens around you. Your bad luck is due to your bad upbringing. Your misery in life is because of your job. Your money situation is because of taxes that the government are putting on you. In other words, everything is not your fault, but everything's happening to you. This is someone on the effect side of the equation. Or are you the type of person, or do you know people, who believe that you are the central pivot to everything that happens in your life. And no matter what happens in your life, you are the master controller of what happens. Or at the very least, you are totally in control of your state. So even if an accident happens and you lose your house, you are still in control of how to build the new house, or at least even how to take that emotionally, whether you can look at it as, well, it's fortunate that I was alive and that, you know, no one was hurt in the incident. This is someone who lives at the cause side of the equation. Now, another way to look at it is those people who are looking at results. In other words, what am I empowered to do? Or those, re those people that always look at the reasons why things did or didn't work. Now, if you put the locus of control around yourself, then you are, in essence, incredibly powerful. Whereas if it's something else that's always happening to you, then of course you are delegating that power to someone or something else, and so you're disempowered. There's absolutely no proof as to which way this is in truth, you know, uh, some religions believe that everything is due to karma. Other people think, well, we're in a world where 
cause and effect. You know, things just happen to us and it's outside of our control. We can't prove it either way, but what we can say is that successful people or people that are feeling empowered always tend to look at life as if they are the instrument of their future destiny and that they have power over their future. It's a much more uh, uplifting concept to think about and we recommend that you try it and see if your results are different in the future. Okay, so that's it for empowerment and we'll just talk briefly on the next topic which is the model of communication before we start playing around with things like presuppositions.